what's up YouTube? EXO coming at you here with another car audio install. On the menu, replacing the stock radio in our Toyota Corolla with an upgraded aftermarket head unit. Sure, the factory system sounded okay, but the deck itself just couldn't deliver the extra settings for going all out. Things like RCAs for adding amps, EQ, Bluetooth, all of those cool additional features required additional stuff. Transmitters for Bluetooth, converters for RCAs. So instead of making things more complicated with more stuff, we could just install a touchscreen double din and get all of those features included right from the get-go. In order to get this radio completely out, there's a few spots where the nearby plastic pieces need to pry out along with it. Check out the links to these cheap panel poppers from Amazon. They work great for removing the trim without breaking off all the clips by accident. This head unit has four bolts holding it in the dash and all of them are 10 millimeters. So if you're lucky enough to find the right size in your socket set, make sure you bring maybe a little piece of a magnet around just in case anything slips away from you. And getting that pesky portion of the air vent just above it removed will give us a clean shot at just wiggling the whole thing free. Got the old girl taken out, wallowing with the ugly ducklings. Now it's time to find a dash kit that matches up with the rest of our mounting points. But be careful, if you're going for a stock look, American International was the only kit that didn't have those ugly looking gaps and curves on the sides. The Metra kit just looks downright cheesy, like those two spots on the sides aren't even supposed to be there. So with a little bit of trimming on some tabs, the AI will be our best bet for this dashboard. Smoothed out nice and flat to avoid getting stuck on our doubled in to get the sides joined up each piece actually has a little notch which faces the direction you want to snap onto the bezel. The two prongs on the top and bottom pretty much do all the work, the sides just wedge between. Once they're both crammed into place, the head unit can literally just slip on the whole kit like a pair of brand new fancy bridges. When it comes to choosing a new head unit, Pioneer is always at the top of the list. Now you can spend big bucks on this type of stuff, but I wanted something a little more affordable without going over 300 bucks. That's why we chose the 601EX. It has all the features that I need like crossovers, equalizers, backup camera, and four volt RCAs. Overall, it's a pretty good choice for our stereo. Well, this kit was a pleasant surprise. Looks damn near meant to be, fellas. I really like how the edges hug closely against the screen, and the only gap that is there is pretty much disguised as a decorative little groove instead of an ugly looking insert. For how cheap this bad boy was, I'll never doubt a universal kit again. And now for the part that everyone loves, wiring up the harness. Every vehicle has its own take on plugs, 
but for the most part, they all end up doing the same thing. In most cases, the front speakers are white and gray wires, and the rear speakers have purple and green. The yellow is constant power, red is switched power, black is for ground, orange is for dimming, blue for antennas, and a striped blue for switching on amps. Don't worry though, after you wire just a couple of these suckers up, you'll remember what wires do what, no problem. I strip down my wires a good solid inch and then twist tie them together down the middle for a really good solid bond when soldering. You can use butt connectors, but when you can, it's always the best option to solder. A little bit of heat shrink over the top and it's one less thing to worry about. All the factory wires are joined up, but what the heck, right? There's still a few colors left behind. No worries though, depending on what features you do have, some wires don't get used at all. In our case, the three extras are a green parking brake, striped purple reverse, and a striped yellow mute. We'll just ignore the mute wire altogether, add some extensions onto our parking brake and reverse, then add up a nice toggle switch to turn on and off our amps. As it sits, there's a perfect spot for mounting a toggle right inside the dashboard. And with the aux cable being completely useless now, we can retrofit a nice USB into the spot that it once went. So when it's all said and done, everything system related will be right in the dash. Let's get modern, shall we? We'll start out by installing the amplifier switch using the smaller blank insert to house it. Its inside dimensions are just about perfect for these cheapo specials and with a smooth hole through the center, the nut that holds it down should have plenty of threads to bite onto. This next part was a big time pain in the butt because the auxiliary plug has a stinking circuit board attached to it, drilling out from the top was not gonna work this time. We ended up having to bust out the jigsaw and cut the entire thing down the middle. To get the actual cut out good enough, the drill press pretty much saved the day again by allowing us to take out small chunks of plastic one bit at a time until eventually the hole looked like a rectangle, but with some added security with JB Weld, it'll hold nice and still without busting through the backside. How's it going, buddy? What are you up to? Eh, I'm just installing a new head unit. I'll be inside in a second. Just let me finish up this project, okay? this bad boy in here just gonna go through all the wires that we prepped ready for us to plug them in easy peasy plug that guy in first 
bam. Then I'll do our antenna for our radio, bam. And then the microphone for our telephone, and then our RCAs. One, two, one, two, and then our subwoofer. This is going to our bass knob. Boom, RCAs are all plugged in. Microphone is plugged in, radio. Now we just need to do the last connection, which I believe is the USB. Where are you? Right here. Bam. There we go, guys. All the connections are good. Now let's just tuck everything away. Let's see how she fits. Bam. Look at that. The holes are lining up perfectly in there. Can't go wrong with that. How about this side? It looks like we got a little something sticking out. Let's go in. Oh, there we go. Perfect. It slid right in. We're in good shape right there, guys. Let's fire her up and see if she works. Go ahead and turn everything on. Boom, baby. We've got power. Awesome. Feels great to have a brand new radio in here. And there we have it, guys. A brand new double din all the features I could want for our aftermarket amplifier, our four channel installation with custom door speakers. Definitely a great uh, thing to have because of the crossover settings, the EQ, and also just having a video screen for our backup camera. Which brings us to our second point. There's a little couple things in this video which we kind of breezed over, including installing the backup camera. If you came across anything in this video that you're like, oh man, I wish you touched base a little bit more on that. And in the next video, plan on us going through the head unit, teaching you how to set up your settings to optimize your sound quality for your new speakers and your sub and all that stuff. So. Thanks for watching this video, guys. I tried to put my best foot forward on it and the editing was unreal. So thank you for liking the video, subscribing. Uh, I always pride myself on going the little bit extra mile to make the videos fun to watch, easy going at a, fa a fast pace. So if you enjoyed it, be sure to stick around, subscribe. Thanks to all of our patrons on Patreon. Uh, we got a brand new system coming up. This month has just been so, so hectic with uh, all of my cars pretty much having problems at the same time. We just replaced so much stuff in little blue CV shafts, rotors, calipers, pads, so much stuff. Thanks to you guys' suggestions in YouTube, I posted up a video showing the shake of my car and a lot of people gave um, great suggestions and very accurate suggestions and went down the mechanic, got the parts fixed. So all right guys, that'll pretty much wrap it up for this video, the head unit installation, just doing everything in order. So there's lots more videos to check out on this project, other projects, you guys know the drill. All right, I'll talk to you in the next one. It's Ixo, sign out. Bye -bye.